Okay, so in this video, we will be talking about what types of AR, or augmented reality, uh, experiences are there. And so the two main ones are marker-based and markerless-based. And so all a marker is is sort of like a, a QR code or a unique image, a unique uh, physical physical code that, or it, I guess it could be digital, but it's a it's a unique sort of marker that allows you to add an AR experience to. And so if you have you know 50 different markers, you could have different uh, experiences for each one of those, and then you could replicate those and, and share them around, and uh, you'll have that specific experience uh, given to other people. And so marker-based IR uses images and objects to call upon digital elements pre-programmed into AR devices or apps. And these markers are points of reference that help AR devices determine how augmented reality is incorporated into the environment. And so it's really sort of the, the anchor, the context that it allows. And this is dependent on the use of a camera on the device. And so with AR, AR is really dependent on the device and the camera. If you don't have a, a good camera, if you don't have a compatible device, uh, then you really can't take, use the power of AR the way it's meant to. There's ways around it, like Vuforia has some has some things for backwards compatibility with phones and a few other things. Uh, Web-based AR is definitely coming around, but we're not necessarily at the point of mass adoption yet. But it's really about, you know, we have anchors with markers, and those markers allow us to have these AR experiences. So for creators, if you have images, if you have uh, comic book covers, all that, perfect things to utilize AR with because it really it really allows you to uh, make make experiences that you never thought possible with your work before. Markerless AR uh, uses patterns, colors, and other features to incorporate AR into environments. Uh, since no markers are pre-programmed, it relies heavily on the use of camera and quality of the capturing device. Uh, this type of AR is often referred to as ground plane tracking. And so if you see a lot of things, uh, Pokemon Go is a perfect example where regardless of where you're at, you can you can use AR and because it will track the ground, it allows you to have Pokemon uh, show up in the real world on in front of you and and you could throw Pokemon balls at it and all that. It's really dependent on uh, seeing where uh, where the context is uh, from for my work. I don't do a lot of markerless AR simply because I work primarily in uh, publishing. And so in publishing, the power of AR is really tied to the pages that are being used. And so for a marker, for marker-based AR, I, I take pride in creating books that people can watch. I take pride in creating books that allow people to use the book uh, without having to know how to read. And so instead of watching TV, instead of looking on your phone to to have this passive experience, uh, I I really enjoy the power of AR uh, in accessibility and uh, really ways to combat illiteracy. And so, if you have a if you have a book and it's sort of you know a kid has story time and he has an iPad and his parents aren't necessarily available to uh, really read to him, but he really wants to he really wants to go beyond just seeing the pictures. I'm creating that experience in AR. Uh, that allows the kid to take the book, keep it open, and then shine his iPad or his phone on it, and that will actually read the pages to him. And so he'll watch it, and he'll learn how to read, and he'll sort of be more engaged in it because he has control over it. And, you know, by adding animated elements, by adding voiceovers, by adding background music, all those things really, uh, really create a, a more immersive experience. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been very memorable to me, for me. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people use right now with markerless AR, are the portals, you know, going from going from the real world and walking into a, a AR space, a virtual space uh, and be able to see that through the lens of your phone. And so those things are really, really powerful. And it really makes accessibility a lot easier, especially now, because a lot of people are just stuck in their house. You know, people are not trying to get sick. And so if you could create AR experiences, one as a creator, but also as a consumer, uh, it really enhances the world that we live in. You know, especially it will definitely enhance the world that you live in if you live in a one bedroom apartment like me. 
you know, where I could, I don't have to leave my room to actually go to some place and interact with these things that probably are across the country. And so that though, those are the big things in AR. Uh, those are the big uh, AR experiences that you're more likely to see. Uh, there are some other ones, you know, we have sound AR and all that, but it's really all about, it's really all about creating those experiences. And as AR continues to boom, then we'll see more stuff coming down the pipeline, especially because a lot of this stuff is device dependent. And so with that, you know, make sure to check out all the, all the other stuff that I have going on with uh, my Doodle Life project, with stuff on Skillshare, with stuff on Udemy. Uh, make sure to just check out all that stuff and, and follow along on the podcast, uh, Stuck in Augmented Reality, uh, on the YouTube channel, Stuck on an Island. Uh, maybe follow some of the stuff on uh, Illtopia because that's where a lot of my AR projects are going to uh, if you're not following them on all the, all the educational platforms. And with that, you know, I'll catch you guys on the flip side.